right, welcome. So tonight's group clearing is on one of the seven deadly sins, and it's sloth. So some people might say, well, why is that a deadly sin? You know, it's like being lazy, why would that be like a sin? Okay, well, basically what happens is, it, a lot of it has to do with, you know, um, obviously the, sin, the deadly sins are created by man, and they're, um, created in a way that's like this is like really bad okay so sloth is like not being in service to creation so if you're if you're lazy and you don't do anything i mean part of what we're doing in the world is we are contributing to the world we contribute by being who we are but we also contribute by what are our gifts what do we bring to the world what, what do we bring to society what do we bring to the clan to the group you know, to humanity. And those who are in that state of laziness, oftentimes you're going to find that these people literally don't want to contribute anything. They want to be taken care of. They, you know what I mean? It's like, and they blame the world, they blame others, and there's a lot of judgments and, and dissension with them, making everything wrong, finding what's wrong with the world, and then finding excuses where they don't have to participate. Okay, and so therefore it becomes a true sin in the eyes of Christianity and those who have created the belief systems around what is a sin. In my world, there's no such thing as sin. There's no good or bad, there's no right or wrong. All there really is, is direct experience and everyone is a divine being, everyone is creator incarnate, and everyone has the full spectrum of lightest of light to the darkest of dark inside of them. So we are discovering who we are through direct experience. And the other component with uh, anyone who we might consider to be lazy or to use the word sloth, basically there's going to be lots of interferences. Okay, you don't just come into the world and not have something interfering with who you are. And if we look at not just this lifetime, we, if we look at your soul imprint, which is what I like to look at, and see what you've really carried forth, there may be all kinds of experiences in your, in your past incarnational uh, experiences where there could be situations, hang on a second, I just need to track somebody. It's easier if I tell a story rather than try to make it up. Hang on a second. Okay, so what's going on? Okay, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's just say in a past incarnational experience that you were someone who was in the world, you were doing good things, you were successful, and, th and that was taken away from you by some, some other peoples that had more power over people, like some, like this is like a king or, or someone who has power over a particular kingdom, then they can take away your rights and they take away who, who you are who you are really, they, it's almost like dishonoring you. So when that happens, and then you're placed in a situation where you're now enslaved, sometimes there can be a giving up, or there can be like a conclusion drawn that what's the point? There's, no, you know, there, there's no, nothing I can do, I will never have back what I had, I'm always going to be enslaved. So that, that conclusion got anchored in into the psyche, and then and then that, that energy gets carried forward, so that belief is still there. So when we look at other at people, like we look at humanity, and we look at those who we in some way consider to be, to be lazy, you know, to have that sloth energy where they just, you know, are parasites on the world, and they have nothing to offer, and they give nothing, and they're just takers, and expect the whole world to take care of them. Now from one perspective, from the human perspective, like, we, like who we are, we can look at that person and really find ways to judge them, make them wrong, and we can find fault, and we can blame them, we can punish them, we can yell at them, we can you know, belittle them and shame them, but it isn't going to change all this other past experience. So. In my world, working with thousands of people and doing this kind of work for over 30 years, I can see and track what's really going on for someone. And everyone on some level might have times when they feel like lazy, or they just don't want to participate, or they just don't feel like doing what they have to do. That isn't so much someone who would be like the sin of sloth, but that would be more like, it just, it's something that happens 
periodically in our lives. And then all of a sudden you'll get energy and motivation and you find yourself doing what you came, you know, what you wanted to do. But the ones that are doing absolutely nothing that, um, yeah, they can, they can come in. They, um, that, that really give up on everything, that they, there's no participation. It's like, like I said, they want everybody to take care of them it's, and there's no, no place inside of them where they take responsibility or accountability. So, like I said, in my reality, rather than judging them, making them wrong, let's find out what's really going on here. Because as we unravel the, the issues and the interferences and we, un, and we clear those, that issue becomes a non-issue. People start stepping into who they are. And without those kinds of clearings, you may never be liberated from that. You may carry that forward lifetime after lifetime, which is what we all do with everything that we experience in our world. So check this out. Whatever you live in this, whatever you've lived, whatever you've experienced, whatever your issues are, whatever your wounding is, whatever your belief systems are, did not come from this incarnation. It came from past, it came from way back. In fact, it's come from many, many, many incarnations. Usually what happens is, let's go back to that person that was literally there, everything was taken from them. So then there's a sinking in of a desperation and a hopelessness and a despair and they'll never, it's like a giving up, okay? So that quality of giving up never leaves the soul frequency that you carry forward into your next incarnation, okay? You're gonna come in with whatever it was that you carried forth. So you're gonna come in with some kind of hopelessness, some kind of despair, some kind of feeling like, what's the point? I don't wanna be here, okay? So you carry that in, and then other things start to happen where you kind of give up and feel hopeless. And what's happening, all that's really happening is you are trying to unravel the past. The only way to do that is to know it. How are you going to know it? Not with your mind. Your thoughts aren't gonna unravel it. You have to know it by living and experiencing what that was like on an emotional level, while staying fully present and conscious in your body, knowing the despair, knowing the pain, knowing the hopelessness, and then letting the frequency move through you so that it begins to unravel and release. Okay, now what also happens, which compounds everything, is you have other interferences. So let's just go ahead and say, okay, let's go back to this person. So in that moment of despair, there's a frequency that we literally echo out Energy is felt. Okay, now if you recognize and understand that the world is just full of discarnate beings floating around, walking around, some of them don't know that they have died, some of them do. Like I can shift my awareness right now and I can see lots and lots and lots of people moving around this, other, this area, inside and outside. Many of them are lost and they're looking for a host. So if you've got a frequency inside your body that matches whatever their wounding is, and you don't want your body, you're not claiming your body, you're not owning this temple that is yours, then oftentimes you're gonna open the door to let these in. Some of the ways in which you do that are using drugs and alcohol, going into altered states, even under anesthesia, where you've lost consciousness. This is a notorious, hospitals are notorious for people coming in to your physical body. So when you have other inter interferences and in other people's energy, and not just one, but let's say you have a hundred, let's say you have a thousand other thought forms or energies or frequencies inside of your body and you're not wanting to be here, guess what's going to take over? The ones inside that want to be able to live through your physical body. So you have that and then you also have um, implants, you can have actual energetic implants in your body that are also contributing to and causing you to have certain thoughts, certain feelings, and you can have, um, you know, like even, even there can even be more past lives, so and maybe that incarnation happened because of a previous lifetime, that that energy got set up. So what we're trying to do in our lives, which people don't really understand, is we are trying to unravel the trauma that's inside of us. 
And we do that through our connection and relationship to other and our romantic relationship. We also do it in our connections with our friends, with our family, with our bosses, our coworkers. So basically what we're looking for is when we have a reaction, there's something inside of us that's being lit up. Now in the higher teachings, the teachings, the mystery school teachings, which you will not find unless you're involved and really deep into the mystery school teachings, is that you are trying to unravel past wounding, past experiences. And the way to do that is when you incarnate, you, you literally bring to you same, oh, same kind of feelings, same kind of experiences that will trigger these feelings inside of you so that you can be done with them. Unfortunately, what we do as human beings is we collect more evidence why we can't open our heart. We collect more um, evidence why it's unsafe to trust anyone. And we collect more evidence why we have to keep hiding and, and, we, and, and we keep giving you more and more evidence why it's not a good idea to really be ourselves. Okay, so what's happening is in our experiences, we are literally creating, co-creating experiences and then rather than unraveling, we gather more. So what happens over time is the soul imprint, rather than being this divine, beautiful light that you really are, every time you have a conclusion or a wounding or something really negative happening, it goes into a dark frequency and you bury it in your subconscious. And then it carries forth into your, your subsequent lifetimes. And so you've got thousands of lifetimes. Some of you have thousands of lifetimes. Some of you just under a thousand. But you've had hundreds of lifetimes, no matter what. Each of you have had hundreds of lifetimes. And you, many of the th same issues that you've been trying to clear in this lifetime are the same issues you've been trying to clear in many of these past incarnational experiences. You've been there, you've done that, it's time for this to be done. So what's really cool is we are in the acceleration, okay? The new paradigm is already happening. The old paradigm is coming to an end and we are becoming more fourth, fifth dimensional beings, which means that we will be able to sense things more easily. We clear things faster. The veils are thinning. We have more light. The electromagnetic field on the planet is getting lighter and more frequencies where it's actually helping to release energies that we don't need, we don't want, we want to be free from. And everything is happening really fast, like really fast, which is really cool. And we still have to release these frequencies. So one of the ways that we release energy is by knowing it, by feeling it. And, and the, what also we do is the kind of work that I'm doing that I also teach, and that is releasing energy from your physical body that is not you. Now keep in mind, if you're a divine being, what does that mean? Are you broken? Are you wounded? Are you incapable? No. You're full of light. You're this beautiful light being. What's in front of your light is all the stuff from past incarnations and then the interferences. And like I was saying, the discarnate beings, other beings that are inside of you that aren't you. So if, you're, if you have a lot of frequencies inside that are not you, you're not going to know what is you. You're not going to know if these thoughts are yours. You're not going to know if the beliefs are yours. You don't know because you think it's you. Like you've grown up with, all, with your life, you've grown up hearing your own thoughts. Well, how many of those thoughts were actually your parents? Or how about your siblings? Or how about your teachers? Or how about the perpetrators that have come into your, inner, in, into your body? I mean, other people that want to control you, manipulate you, that in any way judge you or think they, uh, that want you to do what they want you to do, or even violating you when you've had any kind of abuse, whether it be physical abuse, emotional abuse, sexual abuse, any of these abusive situations, your body has all those frequencies inside of you. So those all need to come out. Those need to come out of your body. You can't know who you are with all these other energies and frequencies and thought forms and programmings and beliefs and conclusions that are not you. It's really simple. It's real basic. And then how about that thing too, like People, most people experience a really deep feeling of aloneness, which often, often can also feel like being lonely. And, and a lot of people too, 
also experience a really deep, if they really sink in to themselves, they can feel like a deep sadness. Like a really deep sadness in the core of the being, okay? So it's almost like no matter what you do, you can't ever seem to clean that up or get, get that to go. It's like it's pervasive in our society and a lot of it has to do with the separation. It's not separation from one another, it's separation from the self. You're separate from your divine self. You're, you're hearing the voices, you're hearing the thoughts, you're feeling the programming of all these frequencies that I'm talking about, all your incarnational experiences, as well as all the people that have bombarded you. And not only that, but we all do the same thing to others. Okay, so whatever, whatever you're living, you've been there, done that, you've, you've played all sides of experiences. So we too, everyone's a perpetrator. Everyone's pushing energy into somebody else. Think about every time you want something from somebody and you don't speak it clearly, you're going to try and convey, you're going to try and get your needs met by perpetrating their energy field and trying to get them to do what you want. Okay, now, then we take it to the next level. If you've been abusive to anybody, if you've done any kind of um, like sexual abuse or rape or any of that kind of stuff, or you're, you know, where you've pushed your energy onto other people or trying to control other people, your energy is inside of other people's bodies as well. So basically what we want to do is we want to start reclaiming ourselves. We want to release energies that are not us. We want to get the frequencies like entities and implants, and we want to get the conclusions out of the body, all these things that are not us. So if we come back to that experience of someone, the, the mortal sin or the sin of uh, the seven deadly sins of sloth, laziness, we're going to have to look really deep into that. So. When, I, when we start go, doing, going into the clearing, the actual clearing itself, what I want you to do, so like I said, some of you may not relate to that, like you might just think, well, okay, I'm not really that, but has there been times in your life where you really did feel like, I just don't want to do anything. I just want somebody to take care of me. I'm done. I give up. Life is hopeless. I want to check out. I don't want to be here on the planet anymore. God, take me. Save me. Somebody do something. Anybody ever feel that way? Okay, so it's not that, you know, you're not, it's not that you're bad or that you're evil or wrong or any of that kind of stuff. It's like, there are just a lot of frequencies that are not you inside your body, okay? So it's also about times when you feel like you can't find your way, okay? Sometimes you're just looking for guidance or looking for the path or for something to present to motivate you, okay? So almost like um, there's nothing that excites you, there's nothing that fills you, there's nothing that draws your attention, that nothing that brings out your passion, nothing that makes you feel alive, nothing that just really says, that's what I want, that's me, that's, that's what I want to do, this is what I want to share, this is my, what, my gift to the world, okay? So what we're going to be doing is we're going to clear out frequencies that are also contributing to what, it, what inhibits or blocks or in some way keeps you really stuck, okay? So when you're um, doing this, what I'm going to ask you to do is I want you just to think, think about perhaps a, a, a time where you felt like giving up or you felt like, you, you know, just like, I don't care anymore, I, there's nothing, I've got nothing to give, there's nothing important. But also there's a feeling in that. And what I'm really after is the feeling, okay? Just so you know what happens. When you show me the feeling, how it makes you feel, you're giving me a bunch of stuff to work with, okay? So it's not, I'm like, you don't have to go into any kind of feeling, you don't have to be going emotional or crying, none of that. All I need is how does it make you feel? When you feel like this laziness, when you feel like this giving up, or you feel like you got nothing to give, or you feel like you're done, or you feel like, you know, I'm just a taker. I'm just a taker, and I don't care. Let everybody else go to work. Let everybody else pay my way. Let everybody else feed me, house me, whatever. I have nothing to contribute. Okay, now that would be a sin if that truly were who you really are. And yet it's not. Okay, so what I want you to do is just, just really think about that for a moment. And because it has a, there's a quality inside that you can feel. 
Okay, so it's a quality, it's a sensation, it's a little bit of an emotion, and it might f somehow feel like there's no direction, um, it might feel like a bit of a sadness, it might feel like a hopelessness, it might have the quality of despair to it, okay? So when you're feeling into it, all you're gonna do is just remember a time where you felt like, like that kind of feeling that I'm describing. But once you have that memory of that, then what you're gonna do is you have the memory, then you take your awareness and you bring it into your, into your body, okay? When you bring it into your body, then you just stay with it and sit with it, and you're letting yourself just ask from your within, how does this make me feel? When I think about this, how does this really make me feel? So you're going after the feeling, okay? And you, you, will, you will feel a feeling, okay? But what we want is, that initial feeling that you can feel is not what we're after. That's your conscious feeling. So the way to access the subconscious feeling is to just be with that initial feeling that you can feel and stay with it, allow it, and then you're gonna go under it. Okay, make sense? So let's just play with that a little bit before we get going so you have a sense of what we're doing. <clears throat> 